Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, February 15th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about the state of Texas and a Senate race that seems to be coming into more and more popularity, but very much is a sleeper race for this United States Senate elections this coming November. Now, the 2024 Senate races are ones where Democrats have been really worried about the expected outcome when it comes down to their partisan composition. Looking at where the Senate map currently has Democratic incumbents and Republican incumbents, Democrats are, quite frankly, being outpaced in a lot of these states, considering that many of them are Republican strongholds. States like West Virginia with the Democratic incumbent and Ohio and Montana have really come into this map and given Democrats a lot of worry for what might be the result in this election and hasn't given much oxygen or energy really to the possibility that they could be playing offense in these Senate elections. But the state of Texas is unique in the fact that it has been so Republican for quite some time now that really there is no expectation here for Democrats to do well whatsoever. The bar is very, very low, and any time they even surpass it, even marginally, people are very happy on the Democratic side of things because, again, Texas was often described as the Republican Party's California, a huge electoral prize that is consistently voting red, but more recently has been getting a lot more competitive. Even in the 2020 presidential election, we found that Democrats lost the Texas presidential race by a margin of 5.6%. That was coupled with a Senate race that just so happened to be a little bit better for Republicans, a 9.8% advantage for John Cornyn, who won back in 2014 by 27.2%. So significant reductions from previous election cycles and ones that honestly should have worried Republicans. And it did, in fact, worry Republicans. In 2022, when they had to redistrict for the 2022 House elections, they drew a congressional map that would ensure a Republican advantage in terms of the House delegation for every single election following the redraw through the next 10 years. And it was something that really showed that they knew that there was a shift in the suburban electorate amongst minority voters, amongst white voters in the state, making this state, which more often than not, was not super competitive back into being a competitive battleground state. Like I was saying, Donald Trump winning across the state by 5.6%, I think it's a little bit off here on real clear politics, was coupled with polls that had indicated the race was going to be a lot closer. Now, by election day, we pretty much knew that because Joe Biden was hovering around 46.5% uh, in terms of the margin of uh, polls here was that Texas simply was still going to be a red state. I expected it to be closer than it actually was, but 5.8% is the narrowest that Texas has been in nearly three decades now. You know, the last time we really saw this competitive was in a three-way race where Ross Perot was a major presidential contender. That hasn't happened in a very, very long period of time. Even in 2004, and granted, George W. Bush was the governor of the state of Texas when he ran in 2000, and of course, was the president when he won re-election in 2004, but regardless, it was a state that overwhelmingly voted for the GOP by over 25 points. And to see that reduced in just a span of, you know, 20 years, less than 16 years, down to a 5.8% advantage, the trajectory here has been moving quite significantly in favor of the Republican Party. Even in some of these other elections where you really don't see much discussion around it, 2016, for instance, Hillary Clinton only lost the state of Texas by nine points. Again, for a map where Joe Biden, sorry, the Democrats were losing Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Iowa, Ohio, Florida, you know, plenty of states that they won in 2012, Texas shifted blue quite significantly. Mitt Romney had won the state by 16 Trump by only nine. And so it went from 16 to nine to six. And this upcoming election cycle, there are questions about whether or not it will be as conservative or as voting Republican as it did in years prior. And while I do think that will be something that could be certainly a later discussion, I think that this individual Senate race that we are seeing in the Texas side of things is quite competitive for a variety of reasons, and ones that you really just don't see talked about because, again, everything is on the defense side of things for Democrats, and I don't think they've given much uh, you know, conversation or thought to the possibility that they could actually win a Senate race in the state of Texas. Because looking at the numbers that were just released, I would say that this certainly comes out and rings out to me as a race that really you don't see much conversation around, but not for good reason. I think because you do see a lot of people diving deeper into the possibility of Democrats winning other states and maintaining where they are in Ohio, maintaining where they are in Montana, maintaining where they are in, you know, plenty of the other states, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, all with Democratic incumbents. But as I was saying, I really don't think there's much validity behind in any real situation, ignoring the reality 
that Ted Cruz as an incumbent Republican senator simply is very, very disliked. And the reason, I guess, the more the catalyst for the reason why I made this video today is because of a new poll from National Public Affairs, a nonpartisan research group that do dove deep into the Texas election that, you know, asked questions about 2024, generally speaking, uh, questions about who they're voting for on the presidential, who they're voting for on the Senate level, how they identify, the general standard set of questions. When you take a look as to what you know, they are voting for in the general election, in the presidential, Donald Trump leads Joe Biden by a margin of around 7%. And that makes a lot of sense. When you're looking at this possibility of a five-way race, Donald Trump gets 42% of the vote and Joe Biden gets just 35%. I think when you're seeing so many possibilities and clear options for other candidates and other choices, besides the top two contenders here, voters seem to be relatively unhappy with who their options are, but still adamant that they want Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States. On the Senate side of things, though, keep in mind we're working with a Trump plus seven electorate, it's not as simple. In the generic congressional ballot, Republicans lead Democrats by four points. But in the Senate ballot, Colin Alred, the expected Democratic nominee, and Ted Cruz, the incumbent Republican senator, are tied. So it's a Trump plus seven electorate, which is more Republican than it was in 2020. It's a Republican plus four congressional ballot here, which is more Republican than I think you, know, you would expect looking at these Senate numbers. So Trump plus seven, Republican plus four, but Senate tied. And the reason for that is because Ted Cruz is so exceptionally unpopular that it might actually build the perfect storm for a possibility of a very, very competitive Senate election. I remember looking back at the 2018 Senate race in the state of Texas and how everyone was saying, you know, this race is not going to be competitive. Look at the polls. Look at the expectations, right? The polls always underestimate Republicans and Texas's Senate race is no different. All this hype around Beto O'Rourke is unfounded. There's no reason to believe that Beto O'Rourke could realistically defeat Ted Cruz. And in a way, they were right. They were right that Beto O'Rourke wouldn't win, but by the margin at which Beto O'Rourke had narrowed up Ted Cruz's re-election bid was so, so substantial. In 2012, Ted Cruz won re-election to, election to the United States Senate by a margin of 15.9%. The polls had indicated it, and that was just the reality. In 2018, you found that six years later, he matched where the president was in the state of Texas in 2012, or sorry, the Republican nominee for president was in 2012, but 2018, significantly worse than where Donald Trump was. 2.6% was the margin between Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke. It was a huge, huge, huge upset in terms of margin. It put Texas back on the map for Democrats, and it made them realize that there were strategies into how to win in the state. It requires an exceptionally unpopular Republican opponent, that being Ted Cruz, and a Democrat who, at the time, was relatively not scandal-plagued, relatively not unpopular, and had not taken stances that were unpopular with the Texas electorate. By the time 2022 came around, following Beto O'Rourke's AR-15 comment, referencing that on the debate stage in 2019, he said, hell yes, we are going to take your AR-15s. Not, you know, far after his presidential election bid in 2020, you know, you can see here that there are reasons why he became less popular amongst the Texas electorate. But even in 2022, when Greg Abbott was running for an additional term here, this is his third term, and he might be running for another one in 2026, Greg Abbott only defeated Beto O'Rourke by a margin of around 12 points. And so it's very interesting because when you take a look at where Greg Abbott was in 2018, 2014, his elections in years past, he had done quite well. This was not a quite well performance. And so Greg Abbott being with a you know 11 point advantage over Beto O'Rourke Shore is a display that Republicans are very much alive and well in Texas because I don't think anybody ever questioned that they were. But I do think that at some point in time there was, you know, questioning about whether or not they would be these dominating figures, these people who no one simply could have been able to counteract. And that was the case for a long time. But I don't think this really reaffirmed that whatsoever. When I see Greg Abbott and Battle Works margin, it brings me up to 2024 and thinking that, you know, maybe there is a way that Texas does go blue on the Senate race. I don't think it will. I think the chances you're talking 5% or less, but it is still an interesting thought experiment because it matters here. Texas is a state that absolutely will be perceived as a battleground in this election. I think that while Donald Trump is doing well in plenty of, you know, a number of states, you cannot ignore the fact that Trump is winning in Texas, but Ted Cruz is tied. There will be a substantial amount of crossover voters that are voting for Trump on the presidential, but voting for Colin Alred on the Senate level. Or maybe voters out there that just simply won't vote for Ted Cruz because they don't see him as someone who's strong for the state. They don't see him as someone that they like or respect. 
that's a fundamental problem that he has been facing within this state for a long, long period of time. He's unpopular for a reason. Voters don't like him. And so I think this is a race that while we are so focused on plenty of the other ones, and for honestly good reason, because Democrats cannot ignore the fact that they are up for grabs in a substantial number of Trump states from 2016, Montana, West Virginia, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, eight states on this map are in states that Donald Trump won in 2016. Even states that he won in 2020, you have three, West Virginia, Ohio, and Montana. And because the Senate majority is so slim, it's 51-49, and West Virginia is having a you know Democratic incumbent retiring, you are way more likely to see that the Senate map flip red than you were before that retirement, even before we had in finished the 2022 midterms. And so looking at the state of Texas, it was never really on the radar for Democrats, but I think it should be. I think this is really going to be a race that, similar to 2018, does shock us in terms of the margin. I think Ted Cruz, by the way, is going to win this Senate race. But Colin Alred is certainly not somebody to be played with. Because Colin Alred, as the nominee for uh, Senate here on the Democratic side, if he is elected, has a very, very interesting you know, uh, backstory. He played for the Tennessee Titans. He is someone who went to school in the state of Texas. He actually ran for Congress in his first election in 2018, that huge ushering in of a blue wave. And you know what he did? It wasn't just that he got elected. He flipped a district blue. And so that was of interesting importance because back in 2016, Pete Sessions in District 32 got 71% of the vote. Two years later, it's flipping blue. And now Colin Alred is a very, very well-known name across the state of Texas and very well-known across the Democratic delegation. And so as we see Colin Alred now faced up against Ted Cruz, he is the one unique candidate who I think has a very, very interesting story and has the means to make this race more competitive. I don't think Democrats, though, should try to shove all of their resources in this state as they might have in, you know, other situations. If there was expected to be a blue wave, maybe they could have. Maybe Texas could be significantly more competitive than it is today, meaning that Democrats might have a 30 percent chance at victory. I don't think that's where we're at. But I think a sleeper race really can be defined by many, many different metrics. And I think in this individual case, it will be defined come November by the very narrow margin that you will see between Ted Cruz and Colin Allred altogether. Texas is a state that I think we often, often ignore because of its ruby red history in which we are ignoring the very real reality that Texas is, in fact, a battleground state. So Texas and plenty of others, I think, are going to be states that we look at to see whether or not there is bleeding leftover bleeding from the 2020 election and from this election in the suburban regions outside Houston, outside Austin, outside Dallas, that might have been Republican strongholds and that might have kept their districts intact, kept their districts red, that are no longer going to be the case. So when we get more data out of Texas, I'll be very interested to see what direction this state is going to go. Right now, the expert forecasts are saying that Texas is absolutely going red, but even some, like Race to the White House, give Colin Red a 30% chance of victory. If I was a Democrat, I would take that in the state of Texas. And so I think that, you know, as we start to take more, uh, get more takeaways from this state, we will either see the Biden campaign and the, you know, uh, DSCC, the Democratic Senate uh, Senatorial Campaign Committee, uh, you know, looking at all of these races and analyzing where they need to focus their energy and focus their resources. I think Texas will certainly be on the lower end of the priority list. But if we do start to see more and more data, like the ones we are seeing now, with Republicans winning the generic ballot, Trump winning the electorate by seven but the Senate race tied, I think there may be a reason for investment. And that might be me being naive and thinking that Texas should even be touched by Democrats. But I think there is a reason to invest in a state that later down the line could be crucial and pivotal to Democratic Party victories. And I think Texas is certainly moving in that direction. Election after election after election, Texas is getting bluer compared to their priors. Whether it's Greg Abbott's performance in the governor's race, Donald Trump's performance in the presidential race, Ted Cruz's performance on the Senate race, and practically everything else. Texas is a state that is not against cross-party voting. I mean, take a look at 2018 in the governor's race, Greg Abbott won by seven, and you found that Ted Cruz won by three. A lot of people are willing to vote for Republicans elsewhere, but Democrats on the Senate level, especially against somebody like Ted Cruz. So certainly a race to keep your eye out for to see if it's going to narrow up, see if it's going to get a lot more competitive, because chances are it probably will just very, very much under the radar. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.